Hey, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and today I want to talk about something. I get asked this all the time. Do I need a capo? Well, when I first started playing guitar, I used to think that I had to be able to play everything without a capo. I felt that it was kind of like a crutch, you know, because guitars don't come with capos built in. So it must, I, I thought it was like a gimmick that people just came up with to, you know, make guitar easy so you could just avoid playing bar chords. At a certain point, though, as I learned more and more about guitar, I realized that a capo is kind of an essential tool depending on the style of music that you're playing. Yeah, it feels like cheating, you know, just throwing your capo up there and then just using the same old chords. You can avoid playing bar chords and you can change the key of the song without learning any theory or any new chords, but it also allows you to play some things that are otherwise impossible without one. Take for instance this tune right here. Now even though you can probably pick out the tune when I play it that way, you know, it sounds like Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles, I'm in no way playing it exactly like the recording, and that's because it's impossible to play it like the recording without a capo. Some of the chord shapes use all four fingers, and unless I can grow another finger here to like, you know, hold down the strings at the seventh fret, it's just not gonna happen. On top of that, a capo can also change the way that the guitar sounds, because as you capo further and further up the neck, the guitar gets brighter sounding. It kind of starts sounding like a mandolin or a ukulele, you know? <laughs> That's really cool because say you're playing with somebody who has their guitar in the open position playing their C chord to an F chord down here. You know that sounds nice and rich and maybe you could play different chord shapes. You end up with the same chord progression though. And that's really cool because now you have like a rich, low sounding guitar and then you have a more trebly, like thin sounding guitar. And that provides a really cool contrast. So that's like a creative way that you can use the capo. And if you're a singer or you play with a singer, it gives you a lot of flexibility in adjusting to the vocalist's range. Let's say for instance, you have a higher voice, like you're a female vocalist or a male vocalist who can sing really high notes like the guy from Fun. And you wanna cover a song by Leonard Cohen, who if you're not familiar with his work, has a very low voice. So let's take one of his most famous songs in the original key. Well, I heard there was a secret chord. So right there, we're starting off with some really low notes. Like 99% of female vocalists and a big chunk of male vocalists just can't even sing that low. Now let's say the singer you're playing with, they know that, hey, my key for that song is F. And you know that, okay, well, we're in the key of C right now. We need to go up to the key of F. Well, I could use my music theory and I could transpose the C, goes up a fourth to become an F chord, the A minor goes up a fourth to become D minor, and so on and so on. And you end up playing the song. So you can see I had to use an entirely different set of chords, I had to use a couple bar chords in there, and that might take a lot of time, and you might not have that much time, you need to get this song together to play it tonight, or maybe you're going to play this song with different vocalists, and some of them, they play it in the original key, some of them play it in F, some of them play it in G. It's pretty beneficial to just be able to grab a capo, slap it on there at the fifth fret. You could just experiment, hey is this working for you? That's, that's still too low. I want to go a bit higher. Okay, we'll just slide it up a couple more frets. Well, I heard there was a secret chord. And they'll be like, yeah, that feels perfect. So you found the key to the song, and all you have to do is just slide up your capo a little bit. I am in no way saying that just buy a capo and you'll never have to learn bar chords. That's not the point of this. What I am saying is that a capo provides you with a quick, reliable way to change keys. It allows you to play some songs that are otherwise impossible to play without a capo. For instance, any song that was written with a capo. And it allows you to kind of make your guitar sound a bit brighter. You know, in combination with some music theory, you can play a song with another guitar player and your guitar will sound a lot different than theirs. It'll fill up a different space. So it kind of opens up the doors to creativity in that way. All in all, I highly recommend one if you plan on strumming chords a lot and playing with a lot of singers or even just playing at home for your friends or even for yourself. 
because you will run across songs that use a capo. If you play electric guitar and play riffs mainly, you might run across one or two tunes. Maybe you can avoid getting the capo, you know, save a couple bucks. But for the most part, if you're going to find yourself strumming chords, it will be an invaluable tool. So before we go, I want to give you some tips for using a capo. Tip number one is to place it as close to the fret as you can. You want to put it exactly where you'd be pressing the string. So if we're putting it on the third fret, well normally I want to press as close to the fret as possible. I want to put my capo in that same spot, as close to the fret as possible. We don't want it to go over the fret or else it'll start to mute the strings. We want it to be as close to the fret as possible and sometimes you can slant it a bit. I find slanting the bottom out a little helps me with some chord shapes like A minor, you know, G, or else my hand runs into the capo, but you don't have to. Just make sure it's on there, make sure it's nice and snug. Pick each string. Make sure that it's not on in a weird way that kind of like pushes the string. See how there I made it, it's like bending my lowest string. You know, you want it to come down flat onto the string so that it doesn't push them to the side. Tip number two, if your capo has adjustable tension, this capo does not. This is just a spring clamp capo. It just has one strength, you know, it just goes on like a clothespin. But this type of capo, the ratchet capo, you can kind of squeeze it as much as you need. And also the shub capo has an adjustable tension knob. Well, as you're adjusting the tension, make sure that it's just enough, you know, just enough to keep the strings down. They're not buzzing, but if it's too much, it'll push the guitar out of tune a little too much. When you have one of these capos, you have no choice. You just put the thing down and it's going to squeeze as hard as it wants. But with the shove capo, you can put it down, adjust the tension so it's just enough. You know, if it's too loose, it doesn't hold them down enough. And if it's too tight, it'll press the strings down a lot, really putting them out of tune. So just keep that in mind. And my final tip, tip number three, is to retune your guitar every time you put your capo on or even move your capo. Most guitars, the higher up the neck you go, they tend to go out of tune a little. So if you tune your guitar perfectly at zero and then you hold down the 12th fret, you'd be surprised. Your guitar might be a tiny bit sharp, might be a little flat. It changes as you go up the neck. So when you're putting a capo down, you want that part to be in tune. Also, as we just mentioned with the tension of the capo, the capo is going to press your strings down a little harder than usual, so it'll make them a little bit sharp. Just listen to this. I'm going to press a note softly. Now I'm going to press it hard. Here I can adjust the pitch of that just by pressing it really hard. That's what your capo is going to do to your strings when it presses down. So make sure you retune your guitar every time you put a capo on or move your capo or remove it. You know, when you reset back to zero, you also want to retune. So I hope I've answered your question as to whether or not you'll need a capo to play guitar. For some of you, it'll be essential. Some people might not find a use for it. They might buy one and just leave it in a drawer for a while. Either way, I hope you found this lesson helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you took the time to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and we'll see you next time. Have fun practicing.